Well, very good morning. I'm Nuris Lies at the Ibrahim Metrics number 2190777. Today, I'm going to talk about the main philosophy idea from the Plato point of view. So, Plato uh, theory of form is a response to the significant metaphysical question of what is true reality. Uh, Plato poses that the the, phys the physical world that we see is actually not the real world. It is not a true reality. Instead, it is the last perfect copy of reflection of an ideal world of forms. And the objects that we see in an interactive from the uh, from our physical world is can be can be thought of as the uh, shadows or reflection of the true form. The forms are abstract, uh, perfect, and changing. Uh, concept or ideals that can transcend both time and space. Uh, we will talk about this in more depth later because initially it is a very confusing idea but first we need to understand the first point better on what exactly Plato is arguing against. So the so Plato is arguing against a very common and scientific worldview and this worldview is called naive realism. So this is the idea where we can perceive the object as they really are and we are able to directly perceive their true essence. A naive realist will claim that the world, the physical world we see right now is actually the real world. Uh, most people take it for granted that the naive realism um, is just a certain way, uh, just a, cer a certain uh, paradigm way of seeing the real, uh, seeing the world. And we should not take it for, and we should not uh, take it, uh, we shouldn't blindly accept it as the absolute truth. Even though, we, uh, even though we've been raised in a society which makes it seem obvious. And these obvious assumptions, I mean, these obvious ideas are the, typically the assumptions that we need to question the most, even though it might uh, be against what is commonly believed. So Plato uh, goes against this conventional wisdom as uh, uh, with, his belief, uh, with his belief of the forms. And we... And it is important for us to open up to these new ideas, and we should and we should understand them so that we so that we don't become too ideological or defensive over the belief that we uh, currently have in about this world. So, what is exactly a real world? Uh, in Plato' point of view, so Plato believed that the real world is actually composed of true form or essence. So, what do we mean by that? So I will uh, take a, let's take a look at a couple of examples first and I will choose the most simple one I guess. So what makes an apple an apple? I mean we know that there are so many different kind of apple they all can decay and mold but what makes each of them an apple that is that is the common uh, thing they all have in common. I mean are, that is the one thing they all have in common. So the uh so we have the apple so apple nest can be uh, thought, can we think as we can consider it as the uh, essence or forms of an apple? So another example is what makes a tool wise man wise. Another mean uh, another uh, another meaning is uh, what uh, how. So what make a wise man wise? So the answer is wisdom. So wisdom is the essence of the wise man. Uh, I think this might be confused you guys. But I have another analogy or another simple can actually simplify the uh, this theory. For now, we actually never seen a real triangle before. I mean, the one that has angle perfectly added up to 180 degree, the one that has a perfectly straight line, and that line has no width or etc. Or for instance, how does a little children know the Pomeranian and the St. Bernard are both dogs when they are more unlike than alike? Or how do we know what justice is when justice never really happens in our world? Because Plato once said that uh, we will once live in a heaven-like realm, a world with perfect things, and that now we can remember. So these idea of things are more purer than uh, the real things that would seem to be. So he gives an analogy of people uh, who's in the cave who know nothing but the shadow on the wall. So someone is dragged. Uh, so someone dragged him out of there and showed the real things. At first, it was uh, dazzling and terrifying, but eventually he realized that this is this is more real than what he uh, what he knows. Obviously, so thing is, we think we know what reality is. We think we know what is. I mean, what is the real dogs? Uh, what is the real dogs? What is the real triangle is? And 
what justice is, but the thing is, we don't. We just have these ideas of, I mean, we just have these memories of these ideas that we inaccurately apply to what we see. So when someone like Plato's teacher, Socrates, uh, tell you what reality is not, we think he's crazy and kill him. And there is, and there's, there's a little bit of fun fact here, the movie of The Matrix, the, the, the cliche, I mean the most, the, the famous movie of The Matrix actually based on this idea. So check it out. So let's explore further the question of whether or not we can ever perceive the form firstly. Please all claim that with the senses, we cannot interact with the form directly as they don't exist in our special and temporal physical world for example. We cannot directly come into the contact of the appleness or goodness. We can only come into the contact of the shadow of this form. However, with the mind and the reason and the practice, we can perceive the world of forms by, recogn by recognizing that uh, imitation in the physical objects of our will so this is the job of what Plato called the philosopher kings or guidance. So we will look more of them soon. For example, um, one way we can come to know, uh, one way we can come to know, uh, the uh, one way we can come to know the form is through the argument from the opposite. That is, one can come to understand good by contrasting it with with what is bad. There is an inner part of uh, of us. So, so Plato calls the soul which is eternal and unchanging before the soul was localized um, by the body. It was um, connected with the real world of the form. That is like why the soul has um, has been confined by the body. We retain a dim recollection of the form and can come to understand them. So the task of the philosophy and the philosopher king is to able to understand the true, uh, the true form of the ideals, for example, like the uh, virtue, like the virtue, the goodness, the friendship, the truth, the justice, and all of these things, so that these things can be able to integrate with the knowledge as best as they can into the physical world. So um, this is very closely to the uh, Plato allegory uh, of the cave. So in the allegory, the escaped prisoner uh, who, who is directly uh, confront, who, I mean, who directly encounter the true form of the uh, reality, rather than, uh, rather than just their shadows uh, projected into the cave wall, so the philosopher will then uh, try his best to enlighten the crew dwellers to his new discoveries because each form is the blueprint of uh, the perfection. And it is our duty to try to replicate the form of the goodness and wisdom and justice as best as we, uh, as best as we can. This is, this is what, I mean, this is what the philosopher kings and I mean this is what the philosopher king purpose to help society do just you know the 